Hello and welcome to this video entitled What Every Candidate Should Know About the Level 1 Kyrie Exam. My name's Stuart Jackerman and I'm part of the tutor team here at Kaplan Schraser. I'd like to thank you for tuning into this video. Uh, the purpose of this short video is to talk about the CHI designation to help people to decide whether it's right for them. So we'll talk about what's in the CHI designation, uh, what, entails, um, what, it, what it entails to go through the program and get the Kaya Charter, and how Kaplan Schweizer can help you to achieve that goal. So first things first, what is the Kaya designation? Well, of course, uh, Kaya, C-A-I-A, -A, it stands for the Chartered Alternative Investment Analyst designation, awarded by the Kaya Association. It is a professional designation. Um, it's deemed to be um, uh, essentially uh, of uh, of degree standard, okay, um, it is looking at uh, the alternative investment space and that alternative investment space involves pretty much uh, anything outside of uh, your traditional investments which would be shares, equities and bonds, fixed income, all right, uh, that would deem to be, that would be deemed an institutional investment. So things like hedge funds, things like real estate and re other real assets, things like commodities, private equity, structured products. You know, the Kaya program is really good at introducing you to the jargon, the language that is used in these sorts of uh, markets, and it's particularly at level one, because there's two levels to the Kaya program, level one and level two. So at level one, it's uh, the focus is on introduction an introduction to the alternative investment space and the type of language that's used and the key definitions and the key techniques. And then at level two, it's the focus is more about application and the current trends and topics that are going on in alternative investments. So looking at Kaya as a program, uh, as a professional qualification, it is one of the fastest growing financial designations out there. It's relatively new. Um, the first exam was administered in 2003. Some of the contemporaries of Kaya, like the CFA program, which has been around over 50 years, um, uh, Kaya program is, uh, is is a relatively new qualification when you compare it to that sort of um, qualification. There has there was explosive growth in Kaya up until the financial crisis of 2008 and 9, and then growth has kind of recovered from uh, well, uh, actually enrollment slowed there but they've recovered since then to get back where they were um, prior, to the, uh, prior to the financial crisis, which gives an overall growth rate since the first qualification of about 34%, um, this compound annual uh, growth rate. So global membership, that's people that hold the charter. And there's nearly 7,000 people now at the last count, and it is very much a global designation as well. Um, Kaya is an American exam, but it does have chapters. In other words, it does have a uh, presence in uh, Europe, uh, particularly Switzerland. Um, it's the second largest chapter um, in London and uh, out in Asia, Hong Kong and Singapore. They're very active charters as well, but there's many charters across the world and Kaya is constantly opening up new charters across the world. So being a, a global designation, it is recognized as the um, stamp of quality in the alternative space across the whole world. Um, you are finding that alternative investment firms like hedge funds and real estate investment houses and private equity investment houses, they're increasingly turning to the Kaya program to provide their employees with the relevant training and education. Um, <coughs> even professional associations like accountants and lawyers would look at the Kaya program to help them become uh, fluent in the language and the applications of alternative investments. And you do find academic institutions like business schools and universities are offering programs uh, which train towards um, their students gaining at least part of the Kaya designation along the way. There has also been increasing interest by traditional investment houses, traditional Wall Street and traditional buy side firms and this is really to do with the fact that the alternative investment space has been growing very very healthily over the years 
um, notwithstanding the credit crunch, of course, um, having its impact across the alternative investment space. Um, the alternative space, as investors look for um, continued high returns and diversification, um, the alternative investment space has benefited greatly from investors' need for um, sustained returns and diversification away from um, your traditional equities and bonds. And one of the things that sets the CHI program apart from maybe other professional designations is uh, the frequent revisions to the CHIA curriculums, um, or curricula, um, in both level one and level two are revised every two to three years to keep them up to date with current trends. And particularly level two, uh, about 25 or 30 percent of level two is actually comprised of uh, research reports and journal articles and white papers that have been written over the last you know, 18 months, two years, uh, which really give level two candidates a good insight into current thinking in financial markets in the alternative space. Something that can't always be said about the competitors to the um, CHIA designation. So here's a, a quick visual, a quick chart, uh, really summarizing the enrollments in the CHIA exam. Uh, as you can see, explosive growth between 03 and up to the credit crunch, and then uh, it's kind of recovered and plateaued from then. Um, level one, you can see about just less than 2,000 delegates signing up for level one each city. It is administered twice a year. Okay, so that's an important thing about the CHIA program. You can get the whole process done in about nine months. If you study to level one, all right, study for about three months to level one, and you're successful. And six months later, you can sit level two. And if you're successful, that's it. The designation, certainly the exam part of the designation has been completed within nine months. Another thing that you can't say um, about other professional designations where that are famously, um, if you like, a, a lot more, um, a lot longer in their duration with regards to achieving the uh, designation. So um, healthy numbers here, 3,000 people signing up every six months. That's 6,000 people signing up a year. Um, and as you can see, about two thirds of those are signing up for level one and about one third of those are signing up for level two each time. So this video is focusing on level one. Let's have a look. Let's have a think about what's actually in the level one program. Well, I've already kind of given some hints. You know, the alternative investment space is made up of some asset classes which get their um, if you like, get, get uh, their focus in a topic weight that's uh, um, devoted to them. So you can see, you know, you've got alternative investments, real assets here, which includes, um, which does include commodities as a real asset. Um, it also includes real estate, obviously, as a real asset. It also includes um, non-physical real assets as well, something that you can own and earn an income from. So something like a uh, you can have intangible things like uh, patents, copyrights, um, you know, becoming increasingly important in the um, uh, in, in developed economies. So um, in real assets, there's a large focus on real estate and commodities, understandably, but there's also a focus on um, investing in maybe art or investing in maybe movies, that sort of thing, um, or investing in uh, um, some sort of intangible patents, research and development doesn't actually have physical form. Hedge funds gets a whole topic weight as well. Um, here at level one, um, I think delegates really benefit from going through the jargon that's used, going through the different hedge fund strategies and just laying out in basic terms, okay, what do these different types of managers actually get up to? You know, um, and I think I think delegates really do find it very beneficial that you know you, you really bust a lot of jargon here and get through these terms that maybe um, are used quite um, liberally in these markets, which aren't always defined by the people that are using them. So we talk a lot in hedge funds about why you would add them to a portfolio, um, what sort of due diligence needs to be done on a hedge fund manager, but also primarily what are the different hedge fund strategies? What does a merger ARB guy do? What does a convertible ARB guy do? What does a equity long short guy do? And you know what are the key 
kind of ideas that they might try and take advantage of, just to give delegates a flavour as to what the differences between these different fund strategies are. In private equity, we meet um, the different styles of private equity, things like leverage buyout investing versus venture capital investing. Okay, um, structured products. Um, this is where we talk about the securitization process, things like asset-backed securities, collateralized debt obligations, lots of heavy jargon there. And Kai is really good at cutting through that jargon and talking about how these structured products are created um, and helping delegates to understand why they're created and why people, why investors might want to buy them. Then outside of those kind of core alternative investment classes, um, you've got some more sort of general uh, topics. So you've got a topic here at the top, uh, professional standards and ethics. Um, that actually borrows from the CFA standards of practice. Um, so, uh, you know, the CFA Institute, uh, I did allude to it earlier, um, it's been around a lot longer than Kaya, and they're, they're famous for a lot of things. They're also, they're, they're, one of the things they're famous for is, is being a very ethical body and writing the standards of practice that they're their charter holders need to adhere to, and their members and candidates need to adhere to. Well, actually, Kaya members and candidates need to adhere to most of it as well, uh, because actually Kaya has adopted the CFA standards of practice and uh, code of ethical conduct as part of their program. So if, you, if on your travels you have seen the CFA standards of practice somewhere before, um, you're getting some stuff um, relatively cheaply there, because it is exactly the CFA standards of practice. Now that's quite a big weight, actually, which just goes to show the importance that Kaya puts on being ethical as well as being a good investor. <clears throat> you know, you can see there that it's actually the you know second biggest weight in the level one exam, and it is in the level two exam as well. Um, this second topic here, the introduction to alternative investments, that's the biggest topic, and in here you will start find some quite general stuff. Um, you do find Kaya's take on what constitutes an alternative investment. You know, it leads us to conclude that these sorts of things are alternative investments. But, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a discussion in there to kick off the whole program about, you know, um, why we consider maybe an investment in uh, real estate to be uh, an alternative investment, but maybe why we don't consider an investment in uh, uh, something like um, vinyl records, uh, you know, uh, an alternative investment um, and so you know they have a discussion what what actually constitutes an alternative investment and then in that topic there's a lot of foundation uh, a lot of sort of rudimentary stuff with regards to um, the tools we're going to need later on so we we deal with basic statistics for example basic performance appraisal uh, basic return calculations um, basic risk calculations that sort of thing which actually will do any delegate good any financial um, any financial practitioner, any practitioner in financial markets will actually get benefit from having these foundations in place. They're not, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> they're not actually most of the things that are discussed in, the, in that chapter. Do apologize. Most of those things are not actually, um, uh, if you like, unique to alternative investments, but of course they're implied in alternative investments. And similarly, this final topic down here, risk and portfolio management, um, this, this is a general sort of topic, but um, in sort of classic Kaya style, we'll define some basic risk techniques, we'll define some basic portfolio management techniques, but then we go on and talk about the issues of applying that to alternative investments and then come up with some other suggestions as to how um, you know, these techniques can be amended, applied, uh, to uh, alternative investments. So there's the curriculum there. And um, the exam itself is comprised, it's a multi-choice exam, it's a multiple choice exam, and it comprises of two batches of 100 questions. So it comprises of 200 questions. So if you take those weights and you multiply it by 200 questions, you're going to get this sort of thing with regards to the number of questions that you're going to see on exam day. So talking about exam day, you know, um, it is a computer-based exam. You will go to a testing centre um, run by a company called Pearson View. All right, you will have to book yourself into a testing centre if you decide to sign up for the exam. 
Um, and there'll be, you know, this Pearson View has a global network of testing centres and there should be one near you, even if you're not near, you know, the uh, capital um, city, uh, there should be one, should be one near you. Um, so level one comprises of 200 questions broken into two parts, essentially. All right. Um, it's all multiple choice. And essentially, you're getting um, four hours for 200 questions. All right. So um, it's broken up into two batches of 100 questions with two hours each. All right. Two batches of 100 questions with two hours each. OK. Um, that, of course, means it's uh, it's just more than a minute per question. All right. It is multi-choice with uh, 72 seconds per question, just a bit more than a minute per question. All right. Um, the multi-choice is either A to C or A to D, and you use the you use the um, computer to answer, so to read the questions and to answer. It's all administered on the computer. Um, all topics are tested, and they are they do come in batches. So you kind of get an ethics batch, and then you'll get you know a hedge funds batch, and then you'll get a, an intro to alternatives batch. Um, and um, yeah, I mean. Like with all exams, you need to prepare as much with regards to exam technique as you do with regards to attacking the, um, the the underlying curriculum. So you need to make sure you do lots and lots of question practice. That you you know you sit plenty of mock exams that you do attempt 100 questions in two hours. All right, you know it's 50 questions an hour, 25 questions in half an hour. You know it's that sort of thing is what you you know getting that exam technique. Kaplan Schrazer can help you build up that exam technique with some of the tools um, that we'll mention later on. OK, so that gives you an idea of the kind of uh, the way the exam is actually administered. Kai doesn't publish old papers. All right. So past papers are not published, but they do publish um, a sample uh, exam on their on their on their website. All right. Obviously, if you're watching this video, you're very interested in the Kai designation. You would find lots of useful information on Kaya.org. All right, Kaya's website, the Kaya Association website. All right, on there you will find, um, actually there's two key resources on there. There is something called a workbook, all right? Um, a workbook uh, is, is very useful. It comes from the Kaya Association itself. And the Kaya Association is kind of throwing out questions that you can practice to help you um, check uh, that you've understood the material and to help you bed down the material and apply that the concepts in the material. And then outside of that, they do offer a sample exam for both levels. You do need to be a delegate to access that sample exam. But if you do sign up as a delegate, that's an invaluable resource as well. All right. So that's coming from the Kaya Association itself. All right. Um, with regards to the sort of questions that people ask about when they're thinking about taking this designation, um, they ask about the pass rates. Pass rates at level one, there's the last four going out to March 15. Actually, September 15 is known now as well at the time of recording. So September 15 is very stable. It was actually static at 66%. Um, so you can see there's very, very static pass rates here for the Kaya Level 1 program and quite high as well. You know, two thirds of people getting through. That's not something you see in other um, designations. And that might be to do with the fact that Kaya is still a relatively new qualification and you know they still do want people to put those four letters on their business cards because it's a form of getting the message out there. Um, so you know you do find with professional designations that in their early years pass rates tend to be high and they do tend to get lower over time. If you compare this to the older sort of CFA, you, won't, you, know, you don't see these sorts of pass rates anymore in the CFA. We've seen things in the 30s and the 40s. All right. That's why you see pass rates in the CFA um, designation. And, you know, um, they're both very similar designations. Kaya is a lot smaller in terms of volume and in terms of time. But they're both serious propositions that you have to apply yourself to um, to achieve success in. And, um, you know, I wouldn't expect pass rates in Kaya as it grows and becomes more and more um, uh, global and the more charter holders out there, I wouldn't expect these pass rates to stay so high. Um, it, get, it begs the question, OK, what's the passing score? What do you need to score to um, get a pass in Kaya Level 1? 
the short answer to that is we don't really know. But if you aim for 70 percent, if you get more than 70 percent, you will pass. OK, the reason we don't really know is because the Kaya Association say 70 um, percent is the initial benchmark. And that's what you should be looking to score. All right. As long as you score above 70 percent, you will um, essentially pass the, pass the exam. OK. Now, if it's a particularly tough exam, because um, Kaya is administered over a window. All right. So you, you'll notice that the level one window might open. Um, you know, in March, I don't know the exact date for the next sitting, but, you know, it might open March the 12th, something like that, and stay open for um, two weeks, something like that. So not everyone gets the same exam. People sit it at different times. Not everyone gets the same exam. Questions are kind of sampled from a big bank of questions. Um, if you get a particularly tough exam, obviously they're, they're monitored. If you get a tough one and the general sort of pass rate um, if you like, the general sort of score, I should say, the general sort of score is a little bit lower, then, you know, Kaya might lower the passing score such that passing rates, as you can see, stay relatively stable. That seems to be their technique. And you don't want to bet on what's called a curve. You know, you don't want to bet on it being a, a distribution of scores that's slightly low. So the cutoff point, you know, um, the cutoff point of 66 percent of people passing is, is, is a nice, um, is, is, is moved down below 70%. You don't really want to bet on that, but it can happen. So if you don't score 70%, it could be that you had a tough exam and, you know, mid-60s is going to be just fine. But really in your preparations, what you should be doing is you should be thinking, I'm going to be aiming in my preparation to get myself on top of the curriculum content, get myself up to speed with the exam technique, such that I get to the stage where when I do my question practice, I'm scoring really nice and stably, um, nice and low sort of volatility in the high 70s. 80 is a bit strong, 80 is a bit high, but if you're scoring, you know, 76, 79, 75, 78, all right, and then there's the odd 71, but then there's the odd 83 or something, then you're good to go. You can you can go in the exam and feel very confident that you, you know, you've prepared, um, you've prepared enough for the exam. You know, people often ask associations like Kaya and training providers like Kaplan and Schweizer, you know, how much do I need to to how much do I need to study? The answer to that, um, you know, even Kaya themselves say there isn't really a one size fits all answer to that. But because people keep saying, give us a number, give us a number, Kaya comes out and says, OK, uh, 200 hours. You know, that's the amount of work that you need to put in to have success at both levels. All right. Um, now, um, I'm, as you can probably tell, I'm a little bit cynical about these kind of numbers, these, especially they're so round, aren't they? 200, you know, it's almost prefixed with, oh, I don't know, 200. That sounds about right. Um, and that's how I view these numbers. You know, not everybody is the same. And that, don't forget, Kaya's putting out these 200 hours. Um, they're saying that that's what somebody should do on their own when they buy the you know, the, the Kaya curriculum, they study on their own without any help from a from a prep provider like Kaplan and Schweizer. Now, obviously, you're going to think I'm biased if I say, um, if I start lauding the praises of, 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 of classroom courses and prep provider notes and all the rest. But I'm still a student in my, in what I do for a living. I still sit courses and I still um, make sure that every qualification that I do, I make sure I spend some time on a course and make sure I spend some time with somebody that has experience in training people towards um, gaining success in that qualification. In other words, what I'm saying here is we don't we don't make you more intelligent, Kaplan Schweizer, you know, um, we don't in any way kind of um, work any sort of magic at all. What we do is we increase your productivity. All right. It really is the case that an hour spent with the Kaplan Schweizer products Guiding towards guiding you towards studying productively in the right areas to get the knowledge you need and the exam technique you need as quickly as possible. Um, chances are, you know, one of those hours is a lot more productive than an hour sitting at home, leafing through the curriculum, wondering, you know, maybe making notes yourself and wondering which area is important and which area 
um, is, uh, is, 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 is is maybe not so core and peripheral. So, you know, if you come on a Schrazer, Kaplan Schrazer program, we structure things like the live online classes over a series of weeks such that just by following the structure of the course, you essentially build up slowly over time the, um, the, the knowledge and the skills to have success on exam day, because that's the secret to preparing for these sorts of designations. It's structured study. It's creeping up on the exam rather than letting the exam creep up on you. You know, um, a lot of people fail in these sort of professional designations because they think, well, you know, whilst there's months to go, you know, there's still months to go and I'm going to be just fine. But unfortunately, they're falling behind. And when, you know, there's uh, six weeks to go or something like that, they start studying, they start panicking with a couple of weeks to go, they start cramming. And it's never really, uh, it's never, they're never really on the right side of the, um, uh, they're never really on the right side of the curve. So um, the key thing is Kaplan Schrazer can help you with a structured study plan. We can help you study um, slowly but surely, covering the topics week by week. All right. It does feel like when you do that, it does feel like if we go over, say, nine weeks, it does feel like in week six, seven, eight, and nine, it feels like I can't even remember week two, week three. It does feel like that. But you know what? It's there when you come to revise in the last month. And that's, you know, suddenly it comes back very quickly when you go back and you look at those early topics because, you know, it is in there. It's just not immediately accessible when there's so many facts coming in, um, uh, you know, over the so much information to try and retain over, um, over a large curriculum. So it's very much with Schrazer. You know, we have a tried and tested um, uh, strategy to help you maximize the chances of your success. It's all about helping you structure your studies over the long term such that when you walk into the exam room, you are fit. Um, uh, you're fit to take the exam and the chances of you passing are as high as they can be. You see, we, we, we have this philosophy at Kaplan. Um, the three P's, we call it, um, prepare, practice, and perform. And this is what Kaplan's solutions are all, if you like, created in the context um, of. So um, we have we offer our Schrazer notes. If you like, Schrazer notes are like the manuals that we write, which summarize curriculum material, condense it into, if you like, uh, um, uh, condense it into information that addresses the learning outcomes of the curriculum so we're really focusing on what you need to know to address the learning outcomes or the learning objectives of the curriculum um, we also throw into the Schrazer notes concept checkers which help you to check at the end of each chapter did i understand that and you can be honest you know with yourself and think there are some areas i'm strong some areas i'm not so strong so over the course of several weeks, you're kind of getting the landscape. Where am I going to have to spend my time in the last few weeks, the last couple of weeks, consolidating my knowledge? Well, in the last couple of weeks, you should be focusing on consolidating your knowledge and practicing applying the knowledge that you have got. So we offer out, you know, with these books, we offer out the online, a nine week online weekly class, all right, which for level one, I will be delivering. All right, that's delivered online um, and it goes through every topic pretty much uh, and focuses a lot on not just, you know, looking at what the curriculum and saying what's there, but, you know, really attacking um, the technical content of the curriculum, removing the tripwires and the hazards that often prevent people from, you know, making good progress through the material and the key thing, applying it. You know, the key thing as soon as possible, looking at an example or looking at an application such that we know how this information is going to allow us to pick up marks on, on exam day. Because at the end of the day, you're, it's you that's sitting in the exam and it's you that's using your knowledge to demonstrate that you understand concepts, you can apply techniques. And so it's important you get um, you get cracking on applying these concepts and demonstrating you understand these concepts as early as possible. 
So that's why the online weekly classes consist of lots of applications, lots of examples, based very much around how Kaya presents the material and how Kaya um, uh, constructs its applications in all of the materials that it offers out. Now, Schweizer, um, here at Schweizer, we offer out an online question bank um, with thousands of questions that you can use to practice your um, uh, practice your exam technique and demonstrate, and also, you know, um, uh, if you like, realize yourself which areas you're strong in and which areas you're not so strong in. Um, there's three practice exams, three full practice exams that Kaplan Schrazer offers out that you should be thinking about sitting in the final weeks leading up to your exam. And in the final weeks leading up to your exam, you will find there is another online class that's offered out, a review class, which goes through the whole curriculum, looking at where the core areas are, looking at basically assuming that you've been through your reading, assuming that you're kind of consolidating your knowledge and really kind of coming in and applying core knowledge in the core areas and really sort of cementing, cementing in both the understanding of the curriculum and the applications and exam technique involved in picking up marks as well. Um, there is a product that Kaya offers out called Secret Source. Um, this is kind of like a, um, a bare bones need to know summary book, right? If you like, in a kind of like an executive summary of different topics. Um, this is useful. Candidates do find this useful um, as long as they've done their primary reading. You know, um, I wouldn't rely on the secret source as a uh, primary text, for example, because it is a summary text. But the secret source is very good at giving you the ability in the final week or so to kind of tick things off and think, I'm good on this, I'm good on that, or I'm not so good here, let's go back and look at that again. And that's what preparing, that's a key stage in preparing for these exams. We do offer out an online mock exam as well. And at the end, it's you as a delegate that goes into the exam room and demonstrates to the examiner that you've done all this hard work. You've read through all these notes, you've maybe it's, you've attended these classes, you've done all this question practice, maybe you've done this review and uh, been through these summaries, you've done the online mock, and um, you are um, uh, really, when you go into the exam, really all you're doing is um, continuing a process that you are very, very used to. It's not like a shock to the system. You go into the exam and you are so used to your question practice, so used to applying the knowledge, you know, and looking at examples that actually, if you like, by the time you get to the exam, it's just another day. All right? Hopefully, you know, it's just another day, get the job done, um, and um, uh, you get the result that you're after. Okay? So everything that we write here and provide at Kaplan Schrazer obviously comes from the Kaya curriculum. The Kaya curriculum is made up of learning um, objectives, all right? Um, we provide, we, we start with those learning objectives. Everything we provide comes from those learning objectives because that's where the exam comes from, all right? Outside of what was on the last slide, we do help you structure your studies. That's a very important um, part of uh, your success in structuring your studies correctly, all right? Um, we obviously help you with practice and we help, you know, with like things like the online question bank. Um, that will help you realize where you're weak and where you're strong because it digitally marks you in different areas, gives you a mark in different areas. You know, we, we offer up key concepts at the back of every reading, flashcards which summarize key information. Some people like this on, you know, so you can whittle down the cards. You know, this one's, um, you know, this one's good, that one's not so good. You whittle down the cards over time. And we offer out what's called a quick sheet as well, a sheet of key facts and formulae that once again can help you whittle off um, to get through all of the information because there is a lot of information at both levels okay but everything we do at Kaplan Schrazer comes from these learning objectives if you want to see the learning objectives and um, they're, they're, they're listed out on Kaya's website once again kaya.org uh, is the website and on there you will find a study guide and it is a useful resource Something you might want to see on there as well is the curriculum, um, excuse me, the candidate handbook. Um, that gives a lot of generally useful information about your exam, which um, a lot of which we're talking about today. 
All right, so there's a candidate handbook on there, which is um, which you might find useful. All right, but um, outside of that, we should talk a little bit more about how you best prepare for the exam and uh, how you avoid the common pitfalls um, that some people fall into when they don't prepare properly. So um, you have to appreciate that Kaya. Kaya is one of those examinations where um, part of the process is you're being tested constantly on um, your ability to process information, all right? Because the second day starts um, for analyst, right? The second day stands for analyst. So with Kaya, one of being one of these sort of higher level professional designations, um, you know, they do like to maybe try and um, you know, your, your exam day experience isn't going to be a bunch of questions that you've seen before. Let's just put it that way. So you really do need to be, no matter how much question practice you've done, you, which is a lot, by the way, you need to have done a lot. Um, you really do need to be comfortable with the concepts because you are going to be applying them. On exam day, you're going to be seeing a lot of situations that you've seen before, but every now and then you're going to see situations that you haven't seen before. So, you know, outside of topic weights, you shouldn't really sort of... Um, look at a batch of questions and say, right, the exam is going to be exactly like that. You should really focus on getting on top of the concepts and making sure you're comfortable with all different types of applications. Now, studying practice exam questions is imperative. All right? Kaplan Schraser has got plenty of mock exams, practice exams, so three practice exams, an online mock exam, Schraser Pro, the online question bank, all of these things can help you practice. But it's not just that. You're going to need to memorize formulae as well. All right, uh, Kaplan can point you towards the important formula that you need to memorize. And by the way, the formula that you don't need to memorize. OK, this is the sort of thing we can help you here with here at Kaplan Schraser. You know, with, with Kaya, there's quite a lot of formula in the underlying curriculum that Kaya have listed out in an exception sheet in the study guide where they say, look, if we test you on these formulae, um, we're not going to ask you to remember them. Um, from scratch. So we'll give you to them in the question. We'll give the formula to you in the question. It's what's called the equation exemption list that's published in the study guide. So, um, you know, this can be a false sense of comfort. It can lead to a false um, degree of confidence and security um, by Kaya delegates if they think that, you know, because there's a few formulae that Kaya will give you in the exam, you don't need to learn any formulae. Um, that's wrong. That's false. You do need to memorize some core formulae that Kaya will not give you in the exam. And uh, here at Kaplan Schraser, when you come in our courses, go through our materials, uh, we can point you towards these key um, formulae, like, for example, in that quick sheet that I mentioned earlier on. But at the end of the day, you've got to be on top of the concepts in the material and you've got to be able to handle applications that maybe you haven't seen before on exam day. It's just part of the process that you're going through. So I've already mentioned the live online classes. Um, these come in a, um, you know, a digital form over the internet, all right, very much in the kind of setup that you're looking at right now. So um, nine three-hour classes covering the whole curriculum, um, tutor, live tutor in instruction with examples, um, and you know, you can choose to watch it live or you can choose to watch it archived. OK, you can access the material prior to the class to pre-prepare and obviously after the class as well. And every week I'll be sending out a weekly class email, just checking in with you guys saying, you know, last week, you know, we did this. Make sure you focus on these key areas. Next week we're going to be doing this. And if you want to do some pre, um, if you want to prepare for it, um, you know, we'll get, these are the key areas that you might want to read through in the texts. And that's a nine week program, a nine week program that if you come on week one and you're there every week to um, week nine, you know, you can be very confident that even if you don't feel like you're remembering everything every day, every week, you can feel very confident that you are slowly but surely taking steps in the right direction. Um, and, um, you know, we're very pleased here at Kaplan Schraser with the success that we have with our structured study approach. OK. Now, don't forget, if you sign up for um, the live online instruction. All right. You do. Um, you do get the um, uh, if you sign up for a premium product. All right. Go to the Kaplan Schraser 
website for the different types of products. But if you go to the, if you do get a premium product, you can ask me or any instructor in the tutor team <coughs> at any time a technical question that you have about the um, curriculum content. So we're always there and we'll always answer your questions. All right, we aim to do it as quickly as possible. We'll always answer it within 24 hours um, or as soon as possible. Um, if you don't sign up for a premium product, if you're self-studying with the Schrazer notes, with the books, you, you will still get access to office hours, which is kind of like a window where you can log into the Kaplan Schrazer system and ask tutor like myself questions. Um, but that will only be for office hours, um, 30 minute, one 30 minute session per week. Um, so, you know, the key thing is we've mentioned these Kaplan Schrazer materials that you have. All right. We've mentioned them. Don't forget there are Kai and I've mentioned the Kaya resources as well. There's the sample exam on the Kaya website and the Kaya workbook as well. That, that's, they're important resources that everybody gets and you should make sure you use them um, on top of the Kaya, um, uh, excuse me, on top of the Kaplan Schrazer materials. Um, what I would say is it's all about making sure you do enough question practice before you go into the exam. And that's what the Kaya preparation um, is all about at Kaplan and Schweizer. It's all about making sure we get through the content in good time and then making sure we hit question practice and we drill the questions. You know, question practice is one of the most important um, differentiators. Um, it's, it's a key performance driver question practice you know when we talk to our delegates uh, who have been successful and we say what's the secret to success they will say question practice um, in the unfortunate case where we talk to people that haven't had success we ask them what would you do differently next time they say I do more questions all right so it really is all about question practice and everybody agrees that all right and so it's really ingrained in our our, um, our methods and our materials. Um, don't forget though, if you sign up for a Kaplan Schweizer course, um, don't forget that um, uh, you're not signing up for the exam. You do need to register for the exam with the Kaya Association themselves. And the fees for registering on the program and signing up for an exam, they are separate to fees for instruction and tuition at Kaplan Schweizer. Okay? Do make sure that you, if you are going to sign up for the Kaya program, do make sure that you book your um, your exam slot as soon as possible, so that you're confident you get a slot that you um, that you want. You know these windows are only sort of uh, two business weeks long. Um, in other words, you know, a Monday to the two Fridays time. And, um, you know, they, these, these testing venues do get booked up quite quickly. So if you'd want to book the back end of the window, then, and you don't book your testing slot with a company called Pearson View, you know, they're the, if you like, the centers that run the venues, Pearson View. If you don't book your slot quickly, you might well find that you get forced to the front of the window and you might feel like you've lost a study week. All right. So do try and... <coughs> Do try and um, book up um, as soon as possible once you've made the decision to enroll in the program. Make sure you book time slots as soon as possible. All right, so um, we've got some general tips to finish off this video with regards to what you can do to maximize your chances of success. But these are the sort of things that are kind of ingrained in our advice that we're giving our delegates who are helping us, um, excuse me, letting us help them. Um, choosing us to help them prepare for their exams. So, you know, on exam day, oh, there's some basic admin to begin with, all right? This is the sort of stuff that you really don't want to get wrong because it would be very frustrating. Basic admin, you know, uh, you can find this sort of stuff out on the Kaya website. Um, there's an ID policy. You do need to have two valid forms of ID. Um, both must have your signature. One of them must have your photo and must be government issued. So, Passport is always going to be a winner there. It's always going to get you in. Um, so that's preferred. It's probably best just to use a current passport where your name on your passport matches the name on your exam ticket. Be very careful. 
you know, if you use a nickname or, a, you know, if you use your middle name as a first name, you know, if you sign up on your exam ticket and it's different to what's on your passport, they're not going to let you in. So be careful with that. All right. And the other thing that would be good um, to use would be a driving license. All right. With a photo on it. OK. Um, make sure there's a photo on it. If it's going to be the one with the photo on it. Yeah. Um, and uh, outside of that, just also be aware that they do have a strict calculator policy. They only allow two sorts of calculators in the exam. Uh, most people across the world kind of go through uni and stuff um, and they use Casios. Um, Casios are nice, but there's no Casios allowed in the exam. <coughs> okay. Um, there's two flavors of calculator that are allowed. The one that we essentially uh, endorse and use in our programs and teach you the keystroke to and help you master is um, the Texas Instruments BA2 Plus. Any model of the Texas Instruments, the TI, BI, BA2 Plus, um, we use that as um, and essentially we've incorporated that model into our tuition materials. The HP12C, you know, it can do everything that the BA2 Plus does, but it's a very different calculator and it would duplicate a lot of work if we supported, if you like, uh, both models. So we choose to go with the TI, which I think is the most popular model. OK, so, um, you know, one thing to remember, we'll just finish off talking about, you know, some tips for exam day itself. You know, when you go into the Kaya program, something like the Kaya program, you're really asking if you can become a member of a club and fly, you know, be a representative of the Kaya Association because you're a charter holder. You know, it's like qualifying as an accountant or qualifying as a lawyer. You're really, you're an ambassador for the association. And on that basis, they're not just going to let anybody in. That's why and ethics is a big part of the curriculum. Um, testing your ability as an analyst by the way they present information is a big part of the program as well. And also, they want to know that you're of sound character as well. They want to know that you are um, good under pressure. So on exam day, they put you under pressure. And they put you under pressure just to test your mettle, just to test that you are somebody that can deal with um, pressure situations. Now, um, the sort of people that deal with pressure situations are the sort of people that know what to do in pressure situations. They prepare properly. You know, if you ever look at a pilot, when, um, uh, you know, Fortunately, I've never seen firsthand a pilot in a pressure situation, but they have protocols to follow. They've done it a hundred times, and okay, so we flick this switch, we switch to this thing, and you know, they they've got a you know they've done it before, they've practiced it, and they know what to do. And in many ways, the pressure simply doesn't get to them because they know if they do everything they can, then they've done everything they can. And you know, whilst we're not flying a plane. And maybe the consequences of panicking are not quite so dramatic. Um, actually, it's, it's exactly the same concept. When you know you have prepared as much as you can for this qualification, why on earth? What reason is there to panic on exam day? There is no reason to panic. In fact, there's reason for you to feel um, whilst the pressure, when the pressure starts getting to you, there's reason to feel. Now, come on, there's no need to panic because if I do, I'm spoiling all the good work that I put in. OK, and so. You know, coming through, going through the program with us here at Kaplan Razor, we can help you prepare. We can give you tips like, um, you know, a lot of people do cram anyway. They burn the candle into the, they burn the midnight candle way into the night, the night before their exam. And the bottom line is, is if you've been on our programs and you've studied with us towards the examination, you don't need to do that. Let other people do that and let other people you know, really jeopardize their chances of success because they jeopardize their ability to think clearly on exam day. So the day before the exam, you know, just a few tips. Um, uh, don't don't think, that, don't try and get lucky by looking at long lists of information and hoping the last thing you saw is the first thing you see in the exam. That's not good. Don't cram. All of your cramming has been done slowly over weeks and weeks, and it's called structured study. You know, review your notes, relax, have a good meal, may even maybe have a, a small 
um, a, a small a wee dram, a, a quarter of a glass, a sip of red wine to help you rest well and you approach the exam the next, next day thinking clearly and with your spirits up because it is as much a test of character and endurance as probably more so that than it is a test of intelligence and remembering stuff okay I mean obviously you've got to remember stuff but <clears throat> you know it's a long old slog you've got to be up for it and you've got to be in the right frame of mind and so you know um, cramming is not the sort of thing you want to be doing you don't want to be tired out and worried on exam day that you haven't done enough work okay so other general sort of tips for you all right if you want to see the next exam window have a look at Kaya's website um, you'll see them on there it's one of the first things that pops up when you look at their website and other sort of just general good tips for you you know you don't want anything you don't want any kind of unknowns outside of the exam you've got enough to deal with with the exam questions that are coming up so you know check out the exam site prior to the test plan your route to the the site you know check out travel information check out whether you know whether there's any industrial action we get that in the UK like strikes things like that check out if there's any um, if there's any engineering works check out you know just just check out that you don't assume that the trains are running the tubes are running you know the metros running or whatever um, in the exam you know uh, you do get you do get half an hour break between the two sessions. Do use it, right? Do use the half an hour break to give yourself a little bit of a um, uh, give yourself a little bit of a, a break from the intensity of the exam. Um, allow your brain to warm up. You do get five minutes, I think, at the start of each exam exam to read a, a kind of a non-disclosure agreement, and I think another five minutes to read um, instructions about the exam that you're getting into. You know, what I would do is maybe don't take that full 10 minutes, but maybe take as long as you need to get the heart rate down a little bit and for you to sit there and think, OK, let's go. And then you click go. Right. Rather than you walk in the exam, sit down, go. And, um, you know, maybe you're not sort of, uh, you know, maybe you're not in the zone just yet. Um, make sure you've got your exam confirmation. Make sure you've got your IDs and your calculator. All right. Don't try and take anything into the exam room apart from your um, uh, what they allow you to take in, which is essentially your calculator, your exam ID, um, uh, your confirmation email essentially, um, and um, a locker key, because everything else must be left in a locker. Okay. Um, so in the exam, you get given a pen and pad in the exam room. You don't take that in, all right? And the sort of thing we can help with on the Kaplan Schweizer courses, we can help you with your calculator, setting your calculator up into the right mode, you know, sometimes they might reset your calculator. Randomly, they might reset your calculator just to back to factory settings, just to make sure people aren't finding an ingenious way to store some information in a memory somehow through some sort of numerical code. That would be a waste of time, I have to say. But um, essentially, um, you need to know. The important thing is you need to know how to put your calculator into the most useful mode. And we can help you with all that stuff on the Kaplan Schweizer courses. All right. Um, on exam day, you don't get punished for wrong answers, so make sure you answer everything. Do not leave any question unanswered. Um, you know, it's a it's a computer-based exam, so being neat and organised is you know it's done for you. It's digitally enforced upon you. But watching your time, all right, keeping an eye on the clock and thinking, am I doing 25 questions every half an hour? That's the sort of thing that you get used to when you prepare properly. All right. Um, I think a lot of the other stuff is very straightforward. Um, I've covered staying calm and focused. Um, a common reason for um, a common reason for getting questions wrong is actually not reading the question properly. Um, even if you know the content, you can miss um, a, a comment like least likely, most likely, something like that. Um, and also make sure you you follow the instructions of the proctor and the exam room because any deviation from what they say could lead to you being censored, um, censured could lead you to, um, uh, you know, I'm actually having your results forwarded. So be careful with that. All right. So on the exam day, you're going to see stuff you haven't seen before. It's part of the test of your character. You're going to have to deal with the pressure and anxiety of 
you know, being concerned, you know, at the timing, dealing with maybe new things that you haven't seen before, okay? Um, you know, a key tip that I can help you out with is, you know, a key tip that, that might help you out, uh, make sure you pick the best answer. Often with these multiple choice answers, it is a process of elimination. And sometimes you're going to pick the best answer if it's kind of like 90% correct. So, for example, if you see two things that are absolutely wrong and then you see something that's, you know, it's right most of the time, but you can think of a counterexample. It's that last one that's right most of the time that's the best answer. Just because there's a counterexample, it doesn't mean it isn't the right answer to the question, which of the following is most likely to be the case. Yeah. So you get used to this technique of picking the best answer. There can be answers that you pick as true that aren't always true, but they're, the, they're true most of the time. They're most likely. OK, now, so if you, you know, um, hopefully the tips that we've discussed on this little um, video is just a taster, really, of the sort of things that we can help you out with over the live online classes that we offer out here at Kaplan Schraser, the um, instructor link support that we offer out. Um, you know, if you want to know more, um, have a look at our website, schraser.com slash Kaya. All right. Have a look um, at the products that we offer out. OK, if you do want to talk to our team, um, there'll be links right there. You can click on to find out more about our offerings. And on there, there are updates, errata, and uh, you can report errors that you find into us on the Schrazer website as well. And so that's really, you know, that is your, if you like, that's your um, uh, contact point after you've watched this video, if you're interested in finding out more. OK. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for tuning in. Um, I do hope that I have the um, pleasure of seeing you um, on a uh, live online Kaya, uh, Kaya Level 1 class sometime in the near future. But until then, I'll thank you very much for listening and I'll bid you uh, good luck. So thanks again and goodbye.